friends in the house. Let me see your hands. 100 level. Give them a round of applause. I am, I am happy especially for the 100 level students because if you listen to what we are saying this morning, your way will be straight in this university. Are there 200 level students in the house? Can you wave to me? 200 level. Amen. I don't know what has happened to your 100 level, but I'm, I'm sure many faculties are beginning to release a, a result. I don't know what has happened, but just like the choir said, what the enemy meant for harm. If you listen this morning, God will turn it around for good. Are there 300 level students in the house? Can, I, can you just wave? Hallelujah. 400 level wave. Amen. Unfortunately, for some 400 level students, what you are going to hear this morning, you are hearing it too late. You will be praying that, ah, I wish, I wish somebody told me this thing in 100 level. And those of you that are here this morning, you are blessed. Give your hands a, a, yourself a round of applause. Because what I'm about to tell you this morning, if you count 10 students in this university, only three of them will know it. Because I know that in this university, what reigns is ignorance, especially among students. Amen. Anyway, my 30 minutes has just started. I'm very good. Okay, you know, last Sunday, the brother that coordinated the prayer sent us to his wife, isn't it? Today, I want to send you to the chairman. Tell him not, nobody should bring me any piece of paper here. Hallelujah. All right, quickly. I want to congratulate the student union president. You know, BSU, we lead the way. Amen. Last, last, before the strike, Union Agric also have elected a young lady as their student union president. So the girls are changing things around. Amen. So I'm talking to you this morning on positioning yourself for academic excellence and how to prepare for your exam. The timetable is out, isn't it? Have you seen the timetable? Have you copied the timetable? Do you know the halls that you are going to do exam? Oh, I will tell you a story later. <laughs> now, how can I excel? How do you see yourself in 400 level? Uh, with apologies to medical science that do 600. Law, how many hundred? Five. So when I mean 400 level, I mean slash 500 level law slash 600 level medicine. So how do you see yourself in 400 level? And if you are here, there is a past. Every student has a past. And that's why I'm happy for 200 level, 300 level, 400 level. Whatever your result had been is a past now. You are here today. You are in the present. And how do you see yourself? And the question I want to see is, what type of grades do you want? If I say the sister that made the first class, please give her a round of applause again. I pray that the university retain you so that you can, you can be a testimony to God and a testimony to Jesus in Jesus' name. How do you see yourself in 400 level? What types of grade do you want? And how can you get such grades? And the, 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 on the summary of this slide is your future ambition will determine your present behavior. Are you understanding what I'm saying? It's the type of grade that you see yourself in 400 level. That determines your behavior from 100 level. And let me quickly say, university is not like secondary school. You know in secondary school, you can fail GSS 1. You didn't do well in GSS 2. Didn't do well in GSS 3. SS 1, you jones about. SS 2, you jones about. But when you got to final year, the principal said, you are going to write YEC. So you became very serious. In secondary school, it can work for you. You can still, the student that was very unserious can still make eight credits. But in the university, it doesn't work like that. For those of you in 100 level, your future, your 400 level result has, is going to start from this first 100 level exam. If you are going to make a first class, it starts from how your performance is. It's not when you come to 400 level that you begin to become serious. It will be too late. So, your future expectation determines your present behavior. And I say, keep your dreams alive. Listen, I thank God for bringing you here this morning. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Most of the students that are perishing academically in this university is because they don't know. 
But this morning you will know in Jesus' name. Next slide. We did a study recently, obstacles that hinder students' academic progress. This is a study we did. And you can see the results we got. The first one is bad company. The second, the highest one is financial challenge. And then, of course, the second to the highest one is boyfriend, girlfriend distractions on campus. So this, one of the things I want to address this morning is academic laziness and poor time management. Next slide. If you are a hundred level, and I say most of the challenges that most students, of most students start in hundred level, I'll tell you very soon. This is because number one, ignorance. You see, hundred level students, they hear so many things from, student, from the older student. They hear, ah, ah, that man, ah, that course, they know the pass ah, who, who know the hard carryover for that course? So when they hear those kind of things, fear will enter their heart. And they begin to think of how to manipulate themselves. Two, hundred level students don't know how to manage freedom that God has given to them on campus. Because, you know, if you came from a very good school, like St. Francis College, amen. Otupo, <laughs> St. Francis College, Otupo. If you came from a good school like St. Francis College, Otupo, you know, they, they will ring by, bang, bang, prep, time to sleep. Bang, bang, time to read. In university, who have your time? Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? So in university, they say academic freedom. If you like, you know there are students in this university that will come to school every day, but they will not enter any lecture. Every day, they dress up from home, come to school, palampulate from north to south, but they will not attend any lecture. So many students don't know how to manage that kind of freedom. The, the third one is wrong relationship. The fourth one is some hundred level students are either too happy or too frustrated. I will explain quickly. You see, most of the students in the Faculty of Arts, the original course they wanted to read was medicine. But because medicine is filled up, they gave them other courses. And those courses, they are angry that they didn't get medicine. So they were managing microbiology and managing chemistry. And before you know it, exam is here. So even the one you are managing, you are not doing well because you are too frustrated. You have not, it looks as if what you wanted to be have been shattered. And some are too happy, you know. Some people are too happy to concentrate. They are too happy to say that, ah, oh boy, I've matriculated. Ah, you know, all the people that graduated from our set, we are the only few that entered university. So they are too happy to be in the system. And concentration is difficult. The fifth one is refusal to listen to academic counsel. And then the last one is poor academic background. Somebody put something on Facebook recently, and he said a letter to my secondary school teachers. Your negligence, we are paying it in the university. You know, many, many schools these days are miracle centers. A school that does not have physics lab, chemistry lab, biology lab, they are producing A's, A's, A's. So we admit you thinking that you, your A that you have in Wayek is genuine. But many of you, <laughs> when they say, what is photosynthesis, you begin to struggle. So background, next slide. Now these are academic arrows that Satan is shooting at BSU students. I want you to read it together. Number one is what? Ah, this one, it looks as if it's the preoccupation of many students. Oh boy, how many girls you don't toast today? I don't toast three. How many agree? Two refuse, but one get green next week. And some students, it looks as if once they are in school, the next thing for them is to get a boyfriend or a girlfriend. So the first arrow that Satan is shooting at students is what? Call it again. It's not from my mouth, you are hearing it too. The second one is what? The third one is what? In those days, you see, uh, one of my classes, come, I might buy 101 students here. Yeah? Lift up your hands and let's see. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. but, uh, I told them that if they fail to come, oh, 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 thank God that you came. If not, something would have happened. Hallelujah. Now listen to instructions. Very, very important. 
You know, some students, they are the ones that used to put themselves in trouble. If they say submit assignment Monday, they will not go. On Tuesday, you go and appear before the lecturer. Sir, I want to submit assignment. Time has gone. See, don't put yourself at the mercy of any lecturer in this university. If you want, if you want, if you don't want to have trouble with your lecturers, if you don't want your, yourself to make yourself a target to lecturers, don't put yourself in trouble. Don't put yourself at the mercy of any teacher. So, if they say submit assignment on Monday, make sure you submit on Monday. Because if you don't submit on Monday, and you go another time to submit, you are at the mercy of the teacher. Amen. The other one is financial problems, then peer pressure, and exam and practice. Hmm. See what you people have sent me. I'm rushing to meet my 30 minutes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Last Senate. Last Senate. I think over 120 students were expelled from this school. Last Senate. The Senate that we had before the strike, Student Union President, hear me now. And JCCF, hear me. This, the, the last Senate we had before the strike, there were over 160 students expelled from this school. Why? Exam and practice. See, in BSU, our laws are stricter than many universities in this, univers in this country. I've gone a on accreditation in some other universities. But in BSU, <laughs> like my head of department used to say, to err is human, but to forgive is not university policy. <laughs> Do you know that if a lecturer catch you inside the exam hall with telephone in your pocket, it's expulsion. Whether the telephone is off and on, it's expulsion. The consequence for that crime in BSU is expulsion. And that's why many of our students, just you are in four, 500 level law, 500 level law. Ha! All your father's school fees, all your mother's school fees. What is it with your phone that you cannot drop your phone at home and come and write the exam? You put it in your pocket. When they catch you, it's, ah, but it's off. Read the law, whether off or on. It's his portion. And I pray it will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody hold your ears. Hold your ears. Say me, myself, here. Yeah. If you like, you hear. If you like, you don't hear. Next slide quickly. You know, Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are what? Do you know the scriptures? And this service is for every one of you. Those of you in 200 level, and you are, you are, you are, you are the weight of your carryover is bowing you down. In short, some students are depressed. When they see their result, depression sets in. Because the result that they are seeing is different from what they were seeing in secondary school. This morning, I thank God that you are here. Amen. Amen. You are not talking to me again. Bodies are lifted at Calvary. Every burden, carryover burden that you came here with, God will lift it in Jesus' name. Amen. And listen, God is going to turn your academics around. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. So one of the burdens that university students are carrying about is carryovers. And I, I know students used to think, carryover, not because so it they happen to everybody from time to time. It's a lie. It's a lie. There are people that came to BSU, they graduated without a carryover. There are people like that. But even if you have a carryover, don't worry. God is here this day to help in Jesus' name. You know, there's a scripture in Proverbs, Proverbs 28, verse what? 13. Don't move the slide. Somebody read it for me. Proverbs 28, 13. Uh, are you reading from your head? Open your Bible. Hey, who is reading it? He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. Whosoever that confess and forsake you will find mercy. And God has brought you here this morning. If you, you see, even though God wants you to prosper, the Bible says he that covereth his sin will not prosper. 
But if you confess and forsake, these burdens will be lifted up your back in Jesus' name. There are some sisters and brothers and, and girls in this school. The reason they are failing exam is heartbreak. Everybody say heartbreak. 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 Small girl, you have not reached any age yet. You are already suffering from heartbreak. Your boyfriend in 100 level is toasting and your best friend in 200 level. And when you go to read, instead of you, the thing to be entering your brain, it is your boyfriend that you are just thinking of, say, ah, God will punish this boy. God will punish this boy. All the things I did for this boy, I used to cook for him, wash his clothes. It will not be well with him. How can you enter exam with that kind of orient mindset and go and pass? So everybody say heartbreak. It's not your portion. <laughs> next slide, next slide. And no, let me go back there. The number one plague of students, sincere students, whether Christian or unchristian, is reading without understanding. What you read now, 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 you enter exam hall, it evaporates. It's not God's plan for your life. And by the grace of God, God is going to turn even that one around this morning. Yeah. How does it happen? Young person, you are not feeding a family. You no problem, nothing. Something that you read now, 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 now. You enter exam, you see question, you forget. It's not of God. And there's help in the house this morning. I didn't hear any amen. Yeah. Next slide. So, Tips to help you. Tips to help you. 100 level student, hear me. Number one, even though, number one, read number one for me. One, two, go. No matter how busy you are, no matter how busy you are, no matter how popular you are, if you want to have good grades, the first rule, as simple as it looks, attend your classes. Hey, I have seen something in this university. As exam is coming like this, go to the labor market. You will see students, they say, give me your note. They will start snapping the note inside their phone. They snap page one, snap page two, snap page three. Where are you where they were copying the phone? That your own, you are coming to snap notes. Read number two for me. After you have struggled to go to class, after you have struggled to go to class, Read number two. I, I hope you know that some people don't take notes in class. Especially in my Bar 101 class. As I am suffering and sweating in the front, they are toasting babes at the back. And the lecturer is sweating. You left home. You took your bath. Came to school. Carry your book. Enter class. Copy note. You will not copy note. It's not your portion in Jesus' name. You know, Satan may not stop you from going to class. But Satan can stop you from copying note. Just like Satan will not stop you from coming to church. But Satan can hinder you from making the decisions that will benefit you. And may you not be like that in Jesus' name. Number three, read it for me. There's a difference between reading and studying. Reading is, oh boy, give me the note. How many pages? 40. Shia, 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 shia. You, have read, you have read all the things. That's not studying. You know, the Bible did not say, read it to show yourself approved. Is that what the Bible said? What should you do? Study. study. Amen. Number what now? Number four, read it. Yes. University is not made for lone rangers. Do you know what lone rangers are? Me, myself, and I. University is not like that. We all need somebody to lead. Every student needs somebody to lean on. And I've told my students, students understand better when another student explains things to them than lecturers. True or false. So get yourself good friends that you can study together. Amen. And last but not the least, plan your personal timetable. Don't be like, don't be like me. <laughs> you know, it's, it's the mercy of God that I'm standing here. <laughs> you know, I went to university direct entry, 200 level. And when I went to the university, 
There was one professor, Yoruba professor, you need just professor Joade. He used to teach GST. GST. In our time, GST don't used to carry credit load. Though. So he teach GST. Anytime you go to the man's class, he will be telling us Yoruba stories. Yoruba stories. So we like the man and we like GST. So yours and yours sincerely went and did timetable for study. Monday GST. Tuesday GST. Three day GST. So 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 what somebody is oh boy. Every day you read GST. Are you a GST major? <laughs> read your books, plan your timetable. Amen. But don't be like me because you love one course. Because you love the lecturer that is teaching that course. Anytime they say go and read, you go and carry that course. What about the other ones? All these five steps will work when you are disciplined, dedicated, and you have determination. Next slide. Next slide. All right. I don't know. Hey. This is, the, this is the crux of the matter. Amen. This is how your results are calculated. So there are four students in this class. Sunday, Monday, Friday, and Thursday. Now, this thing is not a joke. Anytime they say, by a 101, how many credit you need? How many credit you need? It's not a, do you know what that three means? Compared to GST, one, two, one. How many units? Do you know what it means? The university is telling you, by the weight of the course, this course is more important than this one. There are some courses that are one credit unit, isn't it? So, a three credit unit course is more important. It's not as if the one is not important, but if you want to get good grades, target three credit unit courses. Are there four credit unit courses in anywhere in the, in the university? Is it in law or where? Statistics. Uh, hey, statistics. Those ones are four. Those ones are even weightier than three. So, quickly now, Sunday, by 101, see the guy's score. Monday, see the guy's score. And listen, if you are a Monday, can you see Monday? 45, 44, 43, 47, 46. Did he have any carryover? So the Monday will come to that. Brethren, praise God! Brethren, praise God! I saw my result. No carryover! Wait a <laughs> You know, get issue. I saw my result. I know, get issue. Amen. But see Friday's result. May this Friday not be like anybody here in Jesus' name. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to be like the sister that just testified, you should target this Thursday's result. Amen. Now, how do they calculate your GPA? So, if you want all, because this is 100 level result, all the students register the same number of credit. And if you calculate all these credit units, there are how many? 14. So every student in this class had 14 credit units. So, how do you calculate the GPA? Hear me now. Sunday, C3, because he has 58, 58 is C3. 3 times 3 is what? Write it down. If you have paper, write it down. 9. If he had had A in that course, it would be three times five. It's what? The person that had A got 15. If you have C, you got nine. If you have E, E, like Friday, like uh, Monday, if you have E, it means three times one. How many? So we are calculating. Can one, 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 you have B. Four times three, how many? Twelve. Four times three, if it's one one, how many? Like that. That is how they calculate your GPA. Next slide. So in the next slide, we are calculating the GPA. 
CUE means the credit units that you have registered. CUE, CUR, credit units registered. CUE means credit unit end. End means the one that you have passed. WGP is the addition of your grades multiplied by the credit unit load. So, you see Sunday, see Sunday here, 9 plus 12 plus 12 plus 10 plus 9 equals to what? Equals to what? So, WGP for Monday is 52. Who didn't have carryover? I think it's a... Uh... Okay, look at this one. This is Monday. The guy that was calling E, 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 and E. For the same course, even though no carryover, WGP is 22. But look at Thursday. 12 plus 15 plus 15 plus 10 plus 15. What is the WGP? 70. So WGP divide by CUR. That's how you get your GPA. Do you understand? Your WGP divide by CUR. That's how you get your GPA. So you can see from this first semester result, Thursday is already on 4.7. That's first class. Sunday is 3.7. That's second class upper. Because his average scores were around 60. Monday, the guy that was celebrating and testifying, even though he didn't have any carryover, look at his GPA, 1.57. And the one that lined up carryover, this guy, 0 0.64, is on probation. If you have less than one for any semester, at the end of the session, the university will say to go on probation. Next slide, next slide. So, now, by the time you do, by the time you come to your second semester, 100 level, it will become cumulation. Cumulative means your, your performance since you enter the university. Amen. Are you, are you understanding what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So, your performance since you enter the university. So, this class, let's assume that all of them registered the same credit unit first and second semester. So, their TCR now will be 18. TCR means total credit registered. If you are in 400 level, all the, if, listen, if you carry over a course five times, you are just adding to, adding to the total credit registered. And as long as your total credit registered is high, it will be difficult for your GP to go up. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Do you understand? TCE is total credit N. By the time you come to 400 level, if you are doing microbiology, for you to graduate, your TCE must be 144. So even if you didn't have any carryover in your school, as long as your TCE is not 144, they will say, you will not graduate because of TCE deficiency. And then, of course, total weighted grade point. So, your last LCGPA means last GPA for the first semester. That's what they'll put in this column. And then they'll cal calculate your current CGPA. Amen. Amen. You see, I told you about ignorance. One day I was sitting, I was sitting in my office, JJ, minding my business. One student just came, he said, sir, sir, there is a problem. I said, what's the problem? He said, that course is by, by your 205. He said, when I was in 200 level, I wrote it, I have carryover. I said, what did you get that time? He said, 27. When I was in 300 level, I did a carryover. I got 29. I'm in 400 level now. The carryover is still reflecting. I said, why won't it reflect? But he said, sir, 27 plus 29. Is it now more than 50? So in, in, his own, in his own small sense, he thinks that well, they'll they, they, they go back to... 
Oh no. I told him that listening. The, what you had at that carryover, it's not like it's not like football match. Away, you went and played 2-2. Two -two. You come home, you play 1-0. So you win the match. Cumulative 3-2, three -two, isn't it? It's not like that in the university. Every exam is a new exam. Amen. So ladies and gentlemen, this is how your results are calculated. And the summary of this is, my friend, don't joke with your exams. Don't joke with courses that have three credit units or four credit units. If you want your CGPA to go up, those are the courses you should be targeting. Next slide, quickly. All right, of course, this is the, the remark column. See that guy? Even though it's part, see, carryover, the remark is where they list all your carryovers. Amen. Some students, when they have carryover in 100 level, and they come to check their results in 200 level, the carryover is not there. They know that they didn't write the exam, oh, but somehow the exam officer made a mistake. He didn't add. They say, thank God. My God, don't confuse them. <laughs> don't worry. When you come to 400 level, it will reappear. And I want to advise you. You know the temptation is whenever you have carryover. Because in the university, I want to be with my mates. You are carryover in 100 level. You have not registered your 100 level carryover. You are carrying all the courses in 200 level. You are wasting your time. Because as long as you don't do the carryover, they will sit there in your next slide quickly. So, uh, well, I've gone through this one. The, the only point I want to say here is if you are here you have copied your timetable i beg you in the name of god go and get past question papers in all the courses that you are doing beg those that are ahead of you please give me the past question paper because 100 level you don't have experience you have not done exam in the university before the only way you can get that experience is to see the questions that came out last year and see if you can attempt them Amen. So go and get past question papers. Next slide. Good. Now this one is tips. Day before exam. What should you do if you want to study day before exam? Number one, read the summary of your notes. You know some people like me, when I'm reading, I'm, I have a small jotter and I'm jotting the things I'm reading. A day before your exam is not a day to go and carry the whole hand out. Hello? Hello? You don't have time to begin to study the whole hand out. By that time, you should have made summary of your notes to begin to look at them. So one, check the, read your summary. Number two, check the venue and the time of the exam. Hey, I don't know. Some of my colleagues, are, have you not seen students? Exam that started 8 a.m. By, by 10, they are, say, they are coming and say, sir, 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 I'm here for the exam. Where were you? I didn't copy my timetable well. Woo! Your village people have wounded you. That is why when I was in the university, once exam start, I will not leave my mates out of my sight. You go and hide yourself and you are reading. They are inside doing exam. It's not your portion. So check your timetable. <laughs> Number three, ensure that you get all the requirements. Your exam card, your identity card, everything that you need for the exam, get them. Number four, before the exam, it's not the time to do night vigil on your paper. Don't stress yourself. Our people say, if you want to sacrifice a black goat to the gods, it is in the afternoon that you will catch the goat and tie it down. When you have a paper tomorrow, it's not today that you will do all night reading that paper. You're just putting yourself under stress. Now, day of the exam, everybody help me read the first bullet. One, two, go. Day on time. Day on time. Number two. Know how to cram? <laughs> Number three. I know that when Pastor comes, Pastor is going to pray for as many people are, as are experiencing reading and forgetting. Number four. I want you to read number four. Well, well, one, two, go. 
like your best friend. Because when your best friend is sitting seated by your side, there's a temptation that if there's something that you people just discuss and you exam, you are forgotten. There's that temptation to ask your friend. But if you know that the guy is not your friend, if that temptation comes, you will control it. So me, I advise all students, on the day of exam, don't sit near your friend though. Don't sit near your friend though. Hey. One day we were in Senate and we were considering exam and practice cases. And from the testimony of those two girls, they were born again. Do you know what they told the exam and practice committee? They said, sir, we cannot continue to disgrace our God. Actually, we cheated. They thought that by saying the truth, the university will forgive them. They expelled those students. Don't sit near your friend. Anybody that will tempt you to cheat, don't sit near. Number last but not the least. This one happens. This one happens all the time. Exam don't finish. People don't submit. Then one, one boy will come and stand before the regulator. Yes, what is it? Sir, I forgot to write my math number. What? So all the 1,000 scripts now, I will start looking for your own inside. <laughs> it's not your portion in Jesus' name. Hey, there's a special number we are going to sing here. Somebody Why are you crying? They stole my phone. I said, Umpelu. <laughs> Umpelu. <laughs> Come. What is so important about your phone that you cannot keep your phone at home? Next slide. Now, before you start, now they are giving you the patient paper. Before you start writing, number one, Read the instructions. Everybody say, read the instructions. Instruction. Intelligent students don't like reading instructions. They go straight, bam. Exam that they say, answer only three questions. You have answered four. <laughs> it's not your portion. Number two. Read it for me. One, two, go. Because you see, the way, the way students are, invigilators will always say, Hey, sit there. Hey, sit there. Meanwhile, you have crammed something. And you don't want anybody to disturb you. And the man says, stand up. All the things you cram have disappeared. <laughs> don't allow the shouting of invigilators to distract you. Number three, for me, want to go? Be positive. Reject the temptation to cheat. And this one is very important. Answer the, the cheaper questions first. Amen. This is what helped me. I pray it will help you in Jesus' name. Check your time. Because you know the question is cheap. You have written five pages. Meanwhile, the other questions you have not answered. So as you are answering, check your time. 
Yes, number seven. Whatever you can remember. Did I say write it on your question paper? Once you write, even if it is rough work, you write on your question paper and they catch you, that exam is cancelled. For writing on your question paper. So if you have a, an answer booklet, go to the last page of the answer booklet and write everything that you don't want to forget. Not on your question paper. Because when they catch you, they think that you want to give it to the next student sitting by your side. Number eight, obey re exam regulation. Next slide. Now, I just put some exam and practice here and their consequences. Cheat note. Do you know what cheat note is? Whether it is microscopic or macroscopic, as long, he says, sir, I was, I was writing the summary, I forgot it in my pocket. It's an expulsion from the university. And you know the bad thing with our system here? You know, uh, those of you in law, you know all the exam and practice committee is faculty of law that they sit. So it's like a law court. The exam and practice that they caught you in 100 level, in 400 level, maybe that's when they have finished with your case. And you think they have forgotten. When you come to 400 level, they say, a spoil. You think that they have forgotten. Please, so everybody, hold your ear quickly. All the people, all the people, say, I deliver myself, I deliver myself. from every temptation, from every temptation. To, cheat. to cheat. God help me. God help me. Amen. Amen. Mobile phone, I've told you that. Unruly behavior, super, um, if you let us say sit here, you say no, ma. It's cancellation of the exam. Collaborated copy, suspension for one session. That means all the class, hey, my students like this one too much. All of them, they will answer the same word, word by word, word by word. How about now? It cannot happen. Three students, you sat on the same row, or your sentences are the same. It's an evidence for collaboration in the exam. Suspension for one year. And the last one I want to talk is impersonation. Everybody say impersonation. impersonation. Oh, no. One, please, can, just dash me five minutes. Let me round up. One very intelligent student was interested in one girl in their class. So they went into the exam. He looked around and looked around. The girl was not there. So quickly, he said, extra paper, collected extra paper, did his exam and did the girl's exam. So when the lecturer was marking, they discovered the girl's name was on the attendance. But the word, the, the handwriting of the boy, he didn't change the handwriting. So they, he went to exam and practice. They called the girl. They said, did you sit for this exam? The girl knew that there was trouble. So the girl said, no, sir. I was not around. How come your script is here? They called the boy. The boy started begging. I am the one that wrote for her. The boy was expelled. The girl remained and continued her course. Oh, may, may, may love not yearize you like that. Next slide, next slide. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think I'm rounding up now. Faith without works is what? Good grades. That first class, I thank God for that sister. She said, with her effort and God's help, God will not drop good grades from you from heaven. So, I remember in those days, Dr. Zasha will tell the student, he said, read as if without reading, you will fail. Pray as if without praying, you will fail. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved. Next slide. Now, God wants to help you. With all your intelligence, you need the finger of God. How many of you need the finger of God in your life? Amen. That finger is here. Amen. The Bible says in John 15, 5, without me, you can do what? Nothing. Without me, you can do what? Nothing. Now, somebody should read for us Isaiah 59, verse 1. God wants to help you, but, but, Isaiah 59 verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not short. God is talking. Behold, my hand is not short. That, it cannot save. that I cannot help you. Neither is he heavy. It's not as if I am deaf. That, it cannot hear. that I cannot hear your cry. Go on. Verse 2. Verse two. Verse your and your God. 
listening. Oh no. This after the strike, thank you. Sit down, sir. After the strike, one boy came to me. And he said, Sir, I want to discuss something with you. My results are bad. I don't know how to tell my parents. But I want to change course. And it's already in 300 level. And I say, if you change course now to any course, you are going to start in 200 level. So after I talked to him, I said, but with this, your carryovers, don't you pray? He said, sir, I cannot pray because I know that God will not hear me. I said, who told you God will not hear you? He said, I know the things I used to do. And that is the truth for many students. It's not as if God don't want to help you. But you see, God doesn't have a right to help a sinner. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So this morning, I pray that you have you be connected to God. So that the, the long arm of help from God will be useful in your life in Jesus' name. Finally, Jesus came to give full salvation. You know the Bible says you shall be the what? And not the what? How many of you believe that, that promise? I, some people don't believe. I want to see you at the back. How many of you believe that promise? But is your current result a reality that you are at the head? So Jesus came to give spiritual excellence, moral excellence, academic excellence. And he said, behold, I want you to prosper above all things else. So this is where I will stop. I know you have questions. If you have any questions, we are, we are trying not to keep you here for so long. If you have questions, just write it. If there is time, we'll take the question. But I will pause here, and I know that God has helped you this morning. In Jesus' name. Now, bow your heads, let's pray. Bow your heads. Bow your heads, let's pray. There is help for you this morning. Thank you, sir. Okay. Father, we are grateful for such, a, such counsel, such wisdom. Because he wants these ones to succeed. I pray that um, our ears will hear and the grace to do what we are we're hearing. We thank you because I see testimonies coming out from this, this time. A lot of students will be helped. A lot of students will say, had I known, well, thank God because it's never too late. Lord, I thank you. I bless you. Have your way by your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. So much has been said. You won't say you did not hear. Profs, profs spoke as a father. He has a passion for you. He has a desire to see that you do well. He spoke from experience, from his, this wealth of wisdom he has gathered over years. And I'm praying that... Um, Someone will run with the truth 